Um, today, uh, we are shifting a bit. Um, um, all of you have met Johnny. So Johnny and I will now be co-hosting um, these meetings, add a little bit of a lot of flavor, if you've heard Johnny, and uh, just some good <laughs> dialogue and synergy. And so there'll be some other updates coming through, maybe we'll talk about at the end, but just wanted to let you know. So uh, yeah, is there something you want to say, Johnny? Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm nice. <clears throat> it's very nice to see a full house today. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to just get right into it. Um, Edie, if you could take the lead. Yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, welcome to the Modern Contractor Roundtable. Today we have Jeremiah, um, AKA Robots and Magic Powers. Um, he has been a web designer for over 20 years. And in the, the height of the pandemic, he and his business partner, Sarah, who I know and who's really awesome as well, uh, founded Radbots, a full service video um, production, video and marketing company, really. And uh, the rest has been history. And I see Jeremiah and Sarah all over Indianapolis, contractor events, anything any, where people need videography, they have a great way of being where uh, everybody is at. So Jeremiah, super excited to have you here today because um, marketing and marketing material is huge. As we all know, content is, I say, queen. Um, excited to have you speak today. So I want to just jump right in, um, like Johnny mentioned, and just get your general thoughts about um, creating content on any budget. Sure. Uh, well, as you said, me and Sarah, we actually do a class. We We've done it quite a bit over the last year, not this year so much, but where we, we try to go through the the art of really creating content for social media, because I feel like a lot of people get on social media and they want to sell products to people through social media. And that's just not really how it works. Like nobody wants to be sold on social media. People go on social media to get family updates, to see how their friends are doing. They want to be entertained. So with that in mind, if you can therefore entertain future customers or clients and get them sucked into your brand, then you can sell them in some way, but you just, you can't sell them like normal. Uh, I think there's a lot that goes into how you do that. And, you know, everybody's got opinions, but the big thing is, um, is that when you share stuff to your social media on your personal stuff, you get this instant credibility, right? Your friends already know who you are. They know what makes you laugh. Uh, oh, he's going to like this type of joke, but he's not going to like that type of joke. On your business page, it's a wall. It's 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 very tough for your customer or your client to know, you know, well, how, what does this business do? What, you know, what types of uh, charities do they represent? Um, you know, and so it's, it's, it's harder without all that clout to actually build a rapport with your future customers and clients. But the art is in how well can you tell a story? And that's basically what it comes down to because people want to be engaged, right? And if you can engage somebody in a story, then they start learning about you without wanting to really learn about you, if that makes sense. And so the more you can dial in that storyline and switch it up and, and be unique. So here's, here's one real quick story. I, I, for some reason, I follow Indigo. I didn't even know this till yesterday on Facebook. Indigo, if you didn't see it yesterday, they have flipped the script. All of a sudden, they have a bus. They put this uh, picture up, and it's a bus going this angle, and there's like a pole going this angle, and they're like, Indigo has now changed their logo to an X. <laughs> so I, I was just like, this is amazing. These guys spent $0 on this post, but yet it got my attention. Now I'm looking through all the rest of their posts, trying to see what other kind of shenanigans are these guys doing. And so that got me engaged into their brand. It got me on board on, uh, with that. So uh, Wendy's also does a lot of, if you go to the Wendy's, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been to the Wendy's Facebook page, but they're always trolling Burger King or doing, they're always up to some shenanigans somehow and it's hilarious. So and I, I don't eat at Wendy's, but you know, it, it engaged me a little bit. I think at the end of the day, that's, that's what you can do uh, to get people interested and to be on board with your brand or your logo, uh, or your service. I, I mean, I can go on all day, but I, I want to give, you know, chance for other questions. So, 
Yeah, I, I love what you what you're saying here about storyline, and that's something that I've heard a bit, but. Um, I know personally, I even struggle with that in social media. It, it's different in a blog post or a long form YouTube video. So can you, um, so you gave the example of Indigo and Wendy's. And so it sounds like uh, the story, I don't know. Can you just walk us through that a little bit? Like how do you craft that story and how does that look in social media? Yeah. So there's, there's a number of different ways you can craft a story. And um, you have to think of what makes a story compelling. And then we'll, let's go from there. What makes a story compelling? Well, somebody has to find your story relatable. It has to be familiar in some ways. I have to be able to identify with it. Um, if I'm seeing a story and it starts out with a purse, to me, that I'm not identifying with that. Um, uh, it has to be unique. Uh, it can't be the same old story that everybody's telling. I, I see these roofer people all day long posting the exact same thing. Do you need somebody to get on your roof to check for hail damage? I mean, I wish somebody would just do something different to capture my attention, and then I might go, yeah, maybe I would. Uh, it has to be on social media anywhere. Your story has to be right to the point because people are just scrolling. So if you can't capture and then retain people, then the story's not working. Now, the other part of this is, and people do this all day long, You people tell way too much, right? So the other part of this is you have to leave room for mystery. There has to be something that hooks me, but then all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, I'm done with this. And then that that makes me go, well, I want more. You have to leave people wanting more. I know they say that in the music business all the time. <laughs> um, but that's how, you, in, in a general sense, that's how you tell a, a compelling story. There's all kinds of different stories that you could tell though, but I would say the biggest thing that people run into when they're telling a story that's like a no-no is it's too long or there's this thing called the curse of knowledge. So, you know, I know what I know and you know what you know, and we don't necessarily have to know every single detail about what each of us does, right? Uh, I don't need to know everything the plumber's going to do, uh, what types of pipes he's going to use, the, you know, what... Uh, size they are in millimeters, what kind of uh, wrench he needs and stuff. I don't care about any of that stuff. I want to see somebody that's knowledgeable. And then I'm just like, okay, you're the expert. You take it from there. As soon as you start over explaining, then I'm going to fall asleep. So talking about a story, that's the one big no-no is everybody has, you know, some kind of curse of knowledge and they want to explain too much. They want to, um, you know, because they think that, you know, and I'm guilty of this 100% sometimes too, just over explaining stuff. So uh, if you want to get to the different types of stories that you can tell, there's four main ones. Uh, and I'll just go through these real quick. But the, the easiest one that people use all day long is called the villain hero. If you see any ad, you're going to see this all day, every day. Uh, in the first six seconds, there's a villain and then there's a hero. So the villain, let's just say you got to, you know, if you're selling um, paper towels, well, then you might show a coffee cup getting spilled on a desk, right? And it goes over some paper. That's the villain. The hero is the the napkins, right? The paper towels that come in and clean up. You know, Bounty does this all day long. You can switch that. You can have, we did a commercial where somebody spills coffee on themselves and they're in their car and they're getting ready to go to a business meeting. They need somebody to clean their car. So the hero is the mobile detailer that comes in and cleans the car. So this works on multiple levels, but it's probably the most commonly used one. That kind of gets kind of gets you in there in somebody's head, you know, fairly easily with the villain hero. The next one is the mini documentary. You'll see this a lot of times with um, bigger corporations where they're interviewing the CEO. Why did you start this company? Well, I started this company because, you know, uh, I saw a need for this in America and, uh, you know, these trying times, we need more people, you know, so you get into more of like the philosophical aspect of your brand, um, and, and it works on some, you know, level. Um, the other one, obviously we were talking about, the um, leaving room for mystery. The other one is like a cliffhanger. You give people just enough and then at the very end you kind of like leave them with a, almost like call to action like hey go check us out you know you want to see more of this you want to learn more about our company or what we do then you're going to do these steps that we're going to lead to you know which is go to our website or 
um, sign up for more. Um, one of the coolest ones, if you can do it right, is called the expectation breaker. If you're posting um, regular content and it's not working, you can do something that kind of flips the script halfway through and kind of throws people off guard. So if you think about a long time ago when seatbelts first came out, nobody was watching seatbelt commercials. They were kind of tuning it out, right? Because nobody wanted to wear seatbelts. So what they did is the government, they put together a commercial and it was a car commercial. And then it showed like this family getting in a car and they have a dog and everybody's good for a Sunday picnic or driving down the road. And all of a sudden, bang, they get in a car accident. And this all takes place within like five, six seconds, right? So you're like, wait a minute, I thought this was a car commercial. It turns out it was a seatbelt commercial. And then now they got your attention. So the expectation breaker, if you do it just right, can be something that really makes people pause and think about stuff. So. Those, uh, those are what we consider kind of like the big four of how you would, you know, kind of tell a story. That's really powerful, um, Jeremiah. I, I think it's uh, it's interesting how you frame that. Um, so, you know, the four ways. Now, I, I'm just, as a contractor, now the contractors, um, you know, they, they're, they're interested in, in gaining more work. It's really like a localized environment. So you're going on to social media and you're showcasing maybe yourself or your personality or your company's personality and trying to build a brand around it. And, and the question comes like, um, you know, it being such a localized type of thing, you're not really selling a brand out to the world, out to the internet. Um, I, I know even myself as a contractor and other people as a contractor, they're out there, they're showcasing their work. They're doing the do's and the don'ts and, uh, and, uh, the how to's. And, um, you know, I have my opinions about that. You're right. Everybody's doing that. It's not really a great way of, uh, differentiating yourself from the competition. If that's what you're attempting to do, um, you know, getting out there and showing a little bit of a personality, to your crew as opposed to the quality of your work i think it does it captures a lot more attention um i'd like to kind of go around the story and and stick with that a little bit um because you know i think as a contractor you know we've got lots of other things to do you know social media you know aside from hiring a professional to manage all of our channels and and that sort of thing it's it's kind of like a daunting overwhelming task especially sure. when you first start your instagram and you know you're you've got you know four followers like where do i start now again i need to learn how to deal with video i need to learn how to build a story i need to learn how to and there's just such a learning curve and it's overwhelming uh, uh you know for someone who specializes in something else like we're hands-on sort of thing so getting into the tech thing and i'm curious about this story concept and uh and and kind of building that out what that kind of looks like um, do you have any ideas around how how a contractor can kind of frame a story and build a brand around who they are and what they have to offer without getting into the salesy thing? Because I agree with yeah. you 100%. The internet is just sales exhausted. It is. Uh, so there's a couple things here. Um, number one, you know, it, it, you can't just be like, oh, I know, I know it's hard to be like, oh, it's such a daunting task. And you just have to get in there and start doing it. It's one of those things. You just got to get your feet wet and go from there. Uh, and that's what we did, really. We started two years ago posting all this really good content that nobody was liking, you know. And you just have to get in there and start doing it. So what I would say is definitely, you know, we kind of showcase telling a story. And I will get to that in just a second and doing all this really cool social media stuff. If you can't do any of that, what you can start with is to start with instead of a story you just start being helpful right so it, it's hard to organically get your social media your facebook uh, business page to get that to show on everybody's feed uh, the one thing that's in the algorithm is if you're helpful uh, you don't say anything about buy my services but here's what i will do i'm a realtor here's four reasons you should buy a house right now you know, and then go into that. Uh, I see this a lot from my friends uh, that are realtors that are into insurance, uh, that are CPAs. They just sell or they show helpful stuff all the time and they try to 
maybe pick out one or two things that maybe people are thinking about like have you ever thought about being an llc you know how and not without going too much into it just to give you like a little taste that maybe i do need to talk to a cpa uh you know i've been thinking about that and now she by saying you should start an llc that got me thinking about something i was already thinking about so that's not really a story but that also is just helpful information and that's why that's part of facebook's algorithm is if you know you're very helpful then you're going to get to the top of that engagement cycle hopefully um how, do you respond to people's questions on your feed are you asking questions so these are like some of the basic things that you go on youtube and say well how do i you know how do i make engagement better on my facebook that's the number one types of things they're going to say you have to answer first of all you have to ask a question and then you have to answer each individual comment and that engagement is supposed to like you know get you more into um the algorithm now if we come back to um how can i tell a story without thinking of a script and how to do all this stuff think about this this is one thing that we that we do in our um, um our classes we talk about if i have this thing called i'm going to an award ceremony let's say let's say i'm going to the the Emmys or I don't, what are all the cool kids doing today? The Grammys, <laughs> right? I, I don't know. Anyway, so you're going to an award ceremony. Let, so here's one thing you never do is you don't want to post the same thing on every single social media platform. And here's why is because you can use all of the platforms to tell one story, but give just a little bit, give a little piece over here and another little piece from this angle and another little piece of the angle. So if you're at an award ceremony, you might use TikTok to get a behind the scenes in the dressing room, right? You're getting ready. Uh, you may be putting on makeup, not me, of course, but maybe I'm shaving or something. But I'm in the dressing room. I'm going to get my thoughts and feelings about what may or may not happen at the award ceremony. Uh, Facebook is uh, where I'll tag myself as being at the event and show like me arriving at the event, possibly. YouTube might be just the camera you know, camera, still camera in the back, filming the entire award ceremony. If you're a complete nerd, you will watch this thing. Instagram is the red red carpet, you know, where everybody gets the famous red carpet pictures. LinkedIn is the acceptance speech and possibly showing a professional accomplishment, something like that. So if I'm friends with you on Facebook, but also LinkedIn and possibly something like Instagram, then maybe I don't care about your content right away. As I keep scrolling, I said, yeah, I, I saw something on Facebook about this award ceremony. Now I'm seeing a different part of it over here. And then now I'm on Instagram and now you look like a superstar. You've told me a story without me wanting to hear your story. Do you see how that works? So that's a kind of a dramatization of what actually happens. But I just want to show you that that's a way of telling a story without telling a story. So. I think I think it's uh, becoming a lot more clear to me what you mean by a story, and I guess uh, on the day to day, uh, the stories are there. It just seems like just pay attention. I mean, like, what do you do when you get up in the morning to get to work? I mean, first you're getting ready, you know. Then there's the traveling to the job. Then there's uh, actually doing the job. Then there's the accomplishments. I mean, day to day, there is a story there, and it, it does seem that these are the things that that people out there the audience is more interested in what's real, like the real, you know, process and they get a, like a bit of a more intimate relationship with you. So maybe it's not about showcasing how great of a quality or how, um, you know, amazing your skill is. I think the right. assumption there is, is that you have the skill. The question is, is who are you? And maybe that's what, what, uh, what people are a bit more attracted to. I right. Think, I think you're a hundred percent right. I always, tell people when we're coming up with scripts for people um it's not how good you are at your job you know if i'm doing we're doing videos for plumbers right i i personally i don't want to see as an end customer i don't want to see you clogging unclogging a toilet i just don't want to see it right i know you're good at your job what i want to see is is this guy relatable to me is he is he friendly is he smiling in the commercial is he shaking hands is he standing next to the client and the client is very impressed by him 
like the client's very involved in you know what he's doing and those types of things if you show those types of things then people just automatically get a sense that i could you know what i could probably hire this guy and i'd be all right with him i don't even care what he charges not you know it, it's it's less about price it's more about selling yourself than actually how good you are at it um you know i know tons of great artists that are amazing and they just don't make hardly any money you know and it's sad because they're so good at what they do but in the end you're selling yourself so i think uh in the case of of contractors because that's what we're here to kind of discuss is that uh, there's a sense of pride in, in their output a pride in what they do and that's what they want to showcase but um I, for an example like I, I have a flooring company and when i first started uh moving into the social media space at first i thought it was about the quality and what what type of work we do and that's what we wanted to see because i think the intention you know for a contractor to have some social media presence is to build credibility and to showcase their portfolio in a sense um but as things started to evolve i started to realize a little bit more that maybe it was more about the personality of our crew of our team it was what we people like what we do on the job site joking around having fun you know cracking jokes making mistakes being vulnerable and i think that's one of the biggest you know challenges for especially for a contractor who's you know in a lot of senses a perfectionist in what they do um being vulnerable is the farthest thing from what you want to showcase about yourself because you're always in competition with other people but uh i do notice that there's you know a trend of younger accounts especially on instagram which is really the space the contractors like to occupy instagram for some reason um but uh it, it's like uh I, I could do better than them you know like there's this sort of competition about how you know my process is better do this don't do that and i think i'm hearing you it's that that you know really people don't care it's it's oversaturated um get a little bit more personal and just be yourself out there and build the credibility through building relationships with your audience yeah uh, one of the other things too is if you're talking about video or you're talking about running ads or you're talking about creating content my biggest thing is it's consistency over time it's an equation you can't just do one we get this all the time people are like how much for one video it's like you are we're not doing that for you like we don't just want to do one video we want to create a whole campaign for you because there's no point in just having one commercial you know people will share it one day and it might get a few likes or a few shares and then it's gone you know well, what happened where was the behind the scenes where was the extra stuff where did it all go and why was it why was this thing that you did so short uh advertising you know is the exact same way you just i don't need a roofer right now but if you just keep showing me those roofer ads that you're so nice and you get that brand in my head as soon as my roof is leaking i'm going to call you or i'm going to look up i'm going to look through google but then i'm going to recognize your name oh yeah i see those guys on facebook all the time or i see you know something about that logo reminds me of home when I was a kid, so I'm more apt to call you. Things like uh, maybe if you're talking about a contractor or somebody that does roofs, that's called an emotional decision. That's not something I'm going to research for five years and then finally buy the right bed. Uh, if my roof is leaking or my toilet's leaking, I need somebody right now. I need somebody I could trust. Somebody that my mom said, oh, call this guy. You know, that I believe her. I love her. So that's why I'm going to go with that. It's an emotional decision. So the consistency over time will help build that, hopefully, that emotional decision in your favor. Um, and uh, I think I answered, did I answer the question? Can I ask yeah. a question? Please. Okay. Yeah. And it's interesting to me when you talk about these stories and these postings and so forth. And so my question is, do you do these kinds of things on a business page or is this simply on your personal page and the business part of it leaks out? And if that's the case, then what's the purpose of a business page? Well, I mean, there's a lot. So I see a lot of people too that they won't go to the business page because they'll actually make a regular Facebook page and then make that their business because per the algorithm, you're, you're gonna be able to add people and stuff. Uh, I would just say that, it, you know, it's difficult for everyone. Uh, 
I don't know if you've noticed, but as soon as 2020 hit, that algorithm changed. We, we used to get <laughs> 20 people liking all of our stuff on our band page. As soon as the pandemic hit, that was all gone. They just started saying, nope, we're tightening up everything. Now we want you to really pay for you to talk to your own audience that you've desperately amassed, you know? And so it's, it's, it's weird and it's interesting because the algorithm's always changing. One simple thing I will tell you is that, you know, we do talk about stories, but in some ways your customer doesn't want to necessarily always hear you tell your story. And here's an easy thing that you can do is you just do testimonial videos and get your customers tell why they hired you or what they really liked about you. And that's the easiest thing you could do, the most cost effective thing you can do to get your foot in you know the door to telling that story but let somebody else tell it and that's you know it's easy you just you get somebody on camera and you ask them you know why did you hire me or what you know what were your expectations and how did i meet those expectations anything like that will get you going on video and content that will sell and then that that's something you could do for every single you know major client that you have is just show up and and just get them and it doesn't matter if it's on a phone if you have your phone and you're holding it like this instead of like this it almost seems more natural more like i'm going to believe it more it's almost more believable because uh nobody thought to hey turn the camera this way or turn on the lights and you know let's get ready for a production it's more like we're in the moment and i you know there's no cuts you know we're just getting the raw facts here why did you hire this person what did you like about them um if you so again stuff, my question is do i post that on my business page then yeah, you do. But I sometimes I also share it on my other page as well. But like I said, it's consistency over time. And you have to do other posts where you're helpful and giving facts about what you actually do in the industry that you're in. And maybe um, industry news about, oh, some things are happening in my industry and here's what they are. Or here's four things to look at before you hire somebody like me. Um, showing those types of things you know, in the end, it may not change the algorithm in your favor, but if somebody, you know, we all do this. I got introduced to uh, so-and-so plumber. Well, I might go and check out their website. I might go check out their Facebook page. And so seeing all that stuff that you've already done just proves to me that you are a legitimate business, you know. And it used to be that you had to have a website. Now I'm not so sure, you know. I mean, uh, if somebody recommends me on facebook here's the number one thing facebook does not want you to leave facebook i don't know if you guys do that if you're on your mobile phone and you click a link to go to somebody else's site you actually don't leave facebook facebook has made their own browser and integrated into your phone so that way you're actually not even leaving facebook so if you could tag somebody and tag their facebook while you're in facebook that actually there's more credibility than to actually trying to share an external link where they don't want you to leave. The little tiny things like that and consistency over time. It is, so. That's good. And um, I wanna say that at any point, feel free to jump in with a question. And if you feel right. happy about jumping in, feel free to raise your hand. If it makes it easier, sometimes it helps me. Um, but I did, you kind of are, like adjacent to it. So I wanted to mention like the multi-channel, like how you talked about, because what I've noticed is a lot of times contractors are usually only on Facebook or only on Instagram, <clears throat> if on anything. And I, like you even mentioned LinkedIn, I think LinkedIn is an amazing opportunity for contractors because there's no other contractors really talking about what they're doing. And it's very localized as well. It can be, you know? Um, so I'd love to get your, your perspective and input on that. Like maybe what are, um, some good channels if you're just starting out and if you're wanting to expand uh, where to like what social media platforms are good to actually generate, not just to get likes and followers, um, but to actually generate business. Cause that's what it's about at the end of the day. Well, I mean, that's a, it's a really good question. Uh, I think it depends. It really depends on what you're doing. LinkedIn is a weird animal. Uh, we've tried LinkedIn is, is almost like Google in some ways. It takes a lot to get your Google ranking up. Well, it takes a lot to get any kind of momentum and traction on LinkedIn. It just it is. It's more, I don't know. What I would say is definitely some things are going to work for you better than others. And 
the idea is that we're not on everything. We're not on TikTok. I don't know how to dance. You know, that's what I always say. I'm not on TikTok. I don't know how to dance. So, but, you know, some other people, I, I know a guy that does landscaping and he is, he is betting the farm that he's going to get a viral TikTok by doing X, Y, Z or what, you know, showing his, showing humility by, you know, he can't get a lawnmower working or whatever, trying to make a funny video and stuff. And it, I, you have to admire that because he's trying, he's doing stuff. Um, the big thing that I will say is most people see this whole social media thing as this giant mountain and they're at the base and they're just like, I'm, I'm already tired. I haven't even started climbing, but I'm already tired. And I get that. The one thing that I will say is we, you know, to get into the spirit of now I'm going to start creating content. Well, now you have to become an active consumer like a like a like I'm going to be on a mission to consume media and see how I'm being sold when people do something or I see a cool ad I'm gonna be like why did that get my attention I might even save that ad I do this all the time I take screenshots of things because I want to go back and look at that and revisit those things like wow they got my attention because they did this or they said this the one thing I will tell you everybody you can do right now that's free and will get you started on making content is just they always say so there's a there's a big adage or an old adage it's good artists borrow but great artists steal and that means the easiest thing you could do is just go look and see what your competitors are doing see what kind of attitude your if you have a direct competitor see what kind of attitude they have on social media and then see how well that's working for them. maybe somebody's um super funny and they they're always just actively telling jokes on facebook on their business page is that working for them you know or is it not uh, you know and just try to consume your competitors and what they're actually doing and at least if nothing else you can see what's already out there and you know that's somewhere to start and then you can maybe go from there or maybe you can change things up um jeremiah i'd like to kind of like get back to um you know the beginning a little bit like as uh, as a you know contractor that has very little social media presence that's wondering to themselves why like why why should i care right why why do i need to do this like am i really going to be getting leads from my social media and i think you know from some experience the answer is likely no but but um what are the reasons why a contractor should want to have social media presence um you know, maybe to showcase their portfolio um, and use it as a sales closing tool, right? Uh, right? That they could tell clients, you know, go ahead and take a look at my social media and you can see what we're all about, showcase their personality, um, maybe to build the credibility or, or even for networking uh, with other trades, even their competitors, uh, having a network of, of suppliers uh, follow them and that sort of thing, uh, gain credibility there, right? Um, like the why is kind of important. Uh, second to that is, okay, how do I get started? And we touched a little bit on that, right? And and I mean, I have my opinions of that. I'd like to get your your input. Um, I mean, mine being is just start recording yourself and yep. keep it on your phone. Just start recording content and sift through it at the end of the night and see maybe there's something there that you'd like to post. Um, secondly, is is the formats uh, like you were touching a little bit on the different formats of uh, of social media posts. That I, I think that variety is is definitely key. Um, you can get a lot of information from that. So maybe you know one format would be uh, you know me talking with my customers live, or another would be just our drive to work and the stuff we talk about. And and it doesn't always have to be about what you do, but who you are. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know that that contractor that's wondering why, what's right. So right? I, I think you're hitting it on the head there. It's you know, is it going to get you a whole bunch of leads? You know, maybe not. Uh, but the idea is that everybody wants to identify with the brands that they get into. There, you know, it's it, it's it's not a it's not um, magic that almost everybody in a Starbucks cafe has a Macintosh laptop with them, right? It, there's there's no mystery to that. That's what they've been selling. 
the Macintosh people. It's a whole deal. It's not it has nothing to do with the computer. Uh, Nike is nothing to do with the shoes. It's about the the people that represent that brand. I like those people. I I identify with those people. They buy Nikes, so I'm buying Nikes. That's you know. So that's really the gist of why social media is important. You're almost it's like a way to show off your brand. And you know, is it going to work for every single person? No, but I would say, you know, if nothing else, you know, you have to do something to kind of like separate yourself. That I think that's maybe the big thing that I'm looking for is we actually have a whole year contract with a lawn care service in Indianapolis, right? That guy has other people doing videos for him. Why does he hire us still to do professional videos? Is because he knows that. Nobody else in his, in, you know, in his industry at that level is actually making really professional content. And he knows that at the end of the day, he's not going to be the biggest uh, lawn care company, but he's not going to be the smallest either, but he's going to be just enough to show his culture in a very professional way that he believes that people will eventually just go with them because we've interviewed his employees. We've shown their best face. We've shown the company culture. We've shown those people, you know, at a party laughing and having a great time and the owner and he's, you know, he's very nice and he's, he spends a lot of money um, making his employees feel welcome. And I can see that in a video and that's why I'm going to go with him. I like that. I like that. So it's not, it's, this isn't, you know, about trying to get a million views on a video right. like who cares those million viewers are probably in other countries for all you right. know you're never going to get business from them anyways so you know who cares and and that's where i kind of want to shift that that perspective like everyone thinks social media you know go viral like what wh- why right but the reality of it is is that if selling yourself or selling your business has a lot to do with your personality then this is where you need to have a presence to showcase that it doesn't necessarily mean be highly active but have a presence nonetheless because it is a sales tool and it is a way to network with other people in industry and it will make you stronger as a business so to overlook it is doing yourself a disservice right it's just one tool it's just one tool right So, so it's interesting to mention that because you know, maybe it's an overwhelming, daunting task to some, it is, but it is, for sure. the reality of it is, is that that's, that's where you need to be to showcase, right. To close those deals. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about, uh, about Radbots and what kind of things you offer, uh, contractors. Cause I was kind of, I was poking around your landing page, which is outstanding by the way. Thank you. Um, and and a bit of your content and and i love the quality of of work that you do i think it's amazing um and you did mention you know on any budget but i'm, I'm a little curious about uh about radbots and, and what it has to, well, well, to be fair it's it's radbot <laughs> but that's fine it's without forgive me no it's it's fine um radbot uh we what we do is we come together we come to a company, we kind of see where you're at, we kind of see what your competitors doing. So we're going to do all those things that you're already doing anyway, right? We're going to, we just have to see where you're at. But what we like to do is come in and figure out what is the best way to sell your service. Uh, uh, again, going back to this mobile detailer, I don't know if you got, if you saw that commercial or whatever, but the guy said, you know, we went to, we listened to you and the guy said, man, I see all these other mobile detailers and all they do is they put like, you know, like house music, and they're like doing slow mo and then rubbing down a car, right? <laughs> you know, he's like, I don't. He's like, I don't think that works. He goes, every one of my competitors is doing that, and I don't think it works. And I said, well, let's try something different. So going down our list, we just said, okay, let's do. How about we do a hero villain? So what we did is we staged, we we wrote a script, and that's what we do when we come in is we get people together. We write scripts, we show you all this stuff that we want to do, and then, you know, you can pay and then we'll go do it, you know, because I want you to feel really good about everything that we're doing. And we try to keep people informed. And and the biggest thing with video is we try to manage expectations, right? Because 
your idea of a video and my idea of a video may be two completely different things. Right. So I always try to do all that stuff and try to write these cool scripts so that way you know exactly what's going to be said, how the, the actor is going to look, how what you know the voice text maybe is going to order. So we have this car commercial where the girl, she's late for work. She, you know, and this is in five seconds. She's late for work. She spills coffee on herself and in the car. She calls a mobile detailer. Bam, he's right there. Now he's cleaning the car hero villain now i know exactly who to call if i spill coffee in my car you know what i'm saying so you know going and you know us kind of like doing a lot of the work because those scripts don't write themselves but you have to have a script uh i i want to know exactly what that video is going to look like before we ever go out and shoot it because i don't want to ever be in the position of well we didn't think of this or well we should have got this guy to do you know help with this or something like that so um but as a company too we don't like to sell just one um one commercial why sell one commercial when you could take all that footage we have and make five different things you know and that's what i think a lot of people don't realize with video production the major cost is just getting us out there to film you know if you're talking about chopping up video and making a, a video that cost is relatively small compared to the giant chunk you're going to pay to get us out there with cameras and to direct people and to make sure that we're getting the right shots. So, like I said, we're doing this uh, commercial for, or we're doing this year long contract with uh, the lawn care service, you know, that his cost per video goes way down because we go out and film four times a year. The rest of the time, we're just in the office making videos. And he calls me up and he goes, well, you know what? Uh, cancel this other video. I want to hire people now. So I'm like, okay, no problem. Now we're going to do a hiring video for you. We're going to show your company culture. We're going to rearrange the titles. We're going to show your employees having a great time. Now you got a hiring video. And he's like, okay, now I want an aeration video. No problem. We already got that footage. Let's go through. Let's put some titles in there. Let's get that aeration footage, that video for you. And it's just, you know, his cost per video is way down. Whereas somebody that just wanted one commercial you know they're paying a giant chunk and they're only getting one thing out of it so we always try to do multiple videos because you're just you're saving money by doing that anyways and you're gonna get multiple things that you can share and hopefully tell a story we cut the video a different way and switch things up and now you can do a b testing if you don't know what a b testing is it's a whole thing on facebook where you show the audience two different things and then you can see over time which one gets the most traction. That's the way you have to do this advertising on Google, on Facebook, because you don't honestly, you don't actually know all the time what's actually gonna engage your customer. And that's okay though. That's why they have things like A-B testing and Facebook has integrated those because they know that's a really good way to really pin down who your customer is and what what really makes them get attuned to your your logo and your brand? I think it's really cool how uh, how you're able to you know go out and and capture all this video content and repurpose it and re edit it and restructure it to give completely different outputs. Um, I, I didn't realize it was that uh, it was that that uh, like you know easy to. To do, and I guess that kind of goes back to what what you were saying a bit about telling the story, right? Um, is that there's many different ways of telling uh, different stories with you know with you know a bunch of, of video from one just by repurposing and and cutting it different ways, you can you can create all kinds of uh, different things with it. I think that's really neat. So um, you know, uh, getting to uh, the 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 contractor because again that's that's what we're talking about um is it like would would they come to you um with social media presence or or were, are you able to work with you know zero we're able to work with anything uh, the thing is is it just depends on what you're selling because like for us like google adwords would never work for us you know, because even though we say we're a video production company, we're more of a marketing company. If somebody calls us and says, hey, I need somebody to film a wedding, I'm not interested. They say, I need you to film my my uh, son's baseball game. We're not, we're a marketing company. You know, we don't, 
you know, video production companies are kind of different because all they care about is just, yeah, we'll send a guy out, you know, to film you and then we'll give you all the footage. Whereas we actually get into the marketing aspect of how is this video going to benefit you? What's the best thing that we could do? And yeah, so you guys, you would come to us and we would just take a look and we would say, well, you know, how are you advertising? What do you want to be uh, advertising? How much money do you have to spend? Because the amount of money that you have to spend every month on advertising is going to give me a really good idea on what we should do. I mean, if we just, let me look real quick. If we're just talking about advertising anything, uh, if you have less than $500 a month to advertise, then you're looking at Facebook, Instagram. Uh, if you got a medium budget or, you know, five, 500 to a thousand, then now you can get into AdWords. You know, and if you are a, a contractor or a roofer or something, that may be something that would be very beneficial to you because on some certain, you know, uh, industries like the car, the car detailer guy, he spends over $500 a month on AdWords and it does work for him. Like he's right up there. People call him nonstop. So uh, higher budgets, uh, if you wanted to spend $1,500 a month or more, now you can get into streaming services, connected TV. You could be almost everywhere, but you know, that doesn't work for everybody. That wouldn't work for us. Um, I don't, you know, and actually speaking of that, we just create a lot of good content. And I think that alone works for us. That's our specific industry though. That's not a contractor or a roofer or something. So that's, that's specific to us, but maybe, you know, Google AdWords would work for you. So, and it's free to talk to us. I mean, we would be happy to sit down with anybody and, and just talk and just say, well, where are you at? You know, what are you, what are you trying to do? And, you know, uh, what kind of money are you, are you willing to put behind this? And, you know, just go from there. Um, just another quick question. Would yeah. you, would you say that there's a, a correlation between the, the quality of your social media content and the quality of your sales? Yeah, the, obviously, you know, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make it drink. You know, at some point you gotta step in and you have to have the knowledge and the know-how to, um, God, what's that called? Where you actually turn a lead into a sale. I can't think of it right now, but. Um, conversion. Yeah, conversion, yeah. there you go. So obviously you have to have the knowledge and the personality to make a conversion, you know, but here's what I will say. If you are making any content whatsoever, if you just once a year, did something very professional and spent whatever amount of money to make just a, even if it's just a professional interview, that to me makes your other stuff look way bigger than what it is. <laughs> when I see you in a tux, a tuxedo getting an award and it looks professional. Now I have, you know, when I look at, you know, you on a phone and you're talking to me about what you're doing today, all of a sudden that stuff just becomes a little bit better to me. It's like now I feel like, well, this guy's a superstar. So, you know, hey, superstars do stuff on their phone too. So it gives me a, a you know, and I think that's what the, the lawn care company that we work for too, because they're also doing TikTok videos and using phone to capture stuff, but they know that if they just have a certain amount of professional stuff, that'll make their other stuff look even better. People will pay more attention to it. So I like that. Cool. Awesome. Um, are there any uh, other questions? I'm gonna make sure we pause and ask. Okay. Um, Jeremiah, it, you know, we don't need to prolong this, but Jeremiah, is there, do you have any um, like firing, what are they called, parting shots <laughs> for us? Any last thoughts that you want us to? to Absolutely. And what, for one thing, uh, we don't, you know, we have this thing at the end of our presentation. Number one is go look at your competitors and just see what they're doing. That'll get you started. Don't be afraid to be creative. There's a there's a bunch of things that stop you from being creative, and I don't want that to ever happen to you. Um, there's um, there's things to avoid uh, creative block because um, you know some people that are creative they don't create because they're in, in fear of judgment. Uh, that's one of the big ones. You know, I'm not going to do anything cool, so why should I try? And that's just crazy. You have to jump in and you just have to start doing it and you have to see what works. So like us, one of our biggest Instagram posts was literally me in the middle of a shoot going, holy crap, we forgot to do any behind the scenes. So I'm like, 
doing this. That got like over a hundred likes. And it was like wild. the dumbest thing we've ever done because we, we forget that, you know, we're actively doing our stuff. We forget to shoot behind the scenes to show people what we actually do. But if you go look at your competitors, if you set yourself up as a consumer, a knowledgeable consumer of content and see how people are selling you and what attracts you, then you're going to at least be in the spirit of, okay, how can I flip that around? And now how can I sell my brand to my customers? Because remember, people on Facebook, they don't want to be sold a product, but you can sell them your brand and your style. So one big book, I'll just give you one book that is basically everything that I've just said. It's called Made to Stick, and it's by Chip and Dan Heath, uh, Made to Stick. And now basically it's all about how to tell a story, and they get into all the details about how these different stories work. And it's, it's not, it's very cool to read that and go, wow, you know, I've been sold all my life and I had no idea. And it's all about research really. <laughs> um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys, you know, hopefully I helped you guys in some way. And um, yeah. Definitely. Thank you. And that book recommendation yeah. is great. We'll include that in the follow-up email. Um, Jeremiah, thank you so much for your time today. This has been super informative. Um, it's great to see your guys' work. And I can always tell when somebody's gotten a Radbot video. Um, yeah, you guys just do awesome work. So thank you for sharing your morning with us. Uh, before we go, uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, where can people find you? Uh, radbot, radbotvideo.com. And then also, I think we're like on, on all the social medias as Radbot. As we should be. Yeah. <laughs> Rad bot underscore video. So <laughs> awesome. Amazing. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for your time today. Um, you'll get the email with this follow-up and I'll include a link to that video vid um that book, excuse me. Um, we'll find it on Amazon and link it in there. Thank you again, Jeremiah. Thank you, everybody. Okay. You guys have a good week. Thank Great you. to have y'all. Bye, Bye, everybody. Oh. Oh, it's because I'm recording. It wouldn't let me end it. Hold on. Let me record it. How do you think? End this. I think it went great. <laughs> I think it went great.